stark, staring, raving mad. Do you hear I have spots before my eyes? Now, now, Mr. Holloway, take it easy. Relax. Oh, no. Lie oh, down. Help him, Doctor. Oh, if I'm not enough now, I soon will be. Calm oh. yourself down. Now, suppose you just begin at the beginning and tell me the whole story. Well, it all happened when my uncle, Cyrus P. Fothingale, died. We were all gathered in the living room of the old house when... All right, ladies and gentlemen, let us go on with the reading of the will. I, Cyrus P. Fothingale, being of sound mind, etc., etc., to hereby bequeath to my heirs as follows. <coughs> to my dear, sweet sister Matilda, who couldn't keep her long schnozola out of my business, I leave one dollar. Why? We all know good such and such. I should have known he'd do something like that, the old goat. And to my dear cousin Abigail and her husband, I leave two dollars to be divided in any way that they wish. Oh, why the cheap, miserly, stingy old tight wad. And that goes for me, too. <laughs> and the balance of the estate, the sum of $1,600,000.22, I leave to my dearest and most beloved friend, the only one that I could call my pal, the only one I could ever trust, Mr. Jackson. There is a very important provision in the will, and I quote, Since Mr. Jackson cannot manage the estate, I hereby grant my nephew, Sterling, one half the entire estate, provided he takes good care of Mr. Jackson, unquote. You and I are going to be big buddies, aren't we, Mr. Jackson? You and me and all that dog. What could he? Gee, Gertrude, isn't it wonderful? No more worries for me. I'm rich. And Gertrude, you know, I was thinking about us. Now that I'm in the money, maybe you and I could... All right, Larry Pye. You know I've been waiting for seven years. Oh, gee. Then you're not marrying me for my money. Boy, that's getting money the hard way. You keep out of it. Say, who's that you're talking to anyway? I know, I was talking... Oh, oh, oh. Look, Richard, as I was saying... Ah, oh, dang. Let a mush. Darling Holloway, is there a girl in your room? Just who is that you're talking to? Uh, <clears throat> I think it was Mr. Jackson, my dog. Mr. Jackson, your dog? Darling Holloway, you've been drinking. No, I, 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 <laughs> Look, Mr. Jackson, I know the whole thing sounds silly, but you didn't by any chance say anything, did you? Don't be silly. Who ever heard of a talking dog? <laughs> How can dogs talk? The whole thing's silly. Besides, they don't have any vocal cords. How can they talk? Besides, I asked him, he said... <laughs> That's the way it all started, Doc. I could have sworn I heard that dog talk, but then dogs don't talk. Do they? Of course dogs can't talk. Huh? Uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Well, everything went along fine for a while, you see. And then, one day, I was ordering from the butcher. Well, get that, Mr. Bass, my desk. Lamb chops, T-bones of bacon, a pound of cheese. <laughs> oh, excuse me, that's the door. Say, Max, cancel that order and send over a bushel of plain bones instead. Bones? Did you say bones? A bushel of plain bones? Yeah, a bushel of plain old bones. You know, the kind with no meat on it. The kind that dogs like. The kind that dogs like? Yeah, you heard me. The kind that dogs like. Now snap it up before I come over there and punch you in your big, ugly nose. 
<laughs> Wise guy. your bones, wise guy. Bones? I didn't order any bones. I, I did order the lamb chops and T-bone steak and cheese. Look, Bob, oh. you said you wanted a bushel of bones, the kind of dog's life. Dog's life? Yeah. And you're gonna keep them or else? Yeah. Or else what? Or else I'm gonna punch a certain smarty pants right in his nose. I'd like to see you try and punch me in the nose. You brought quite a few orders of bones after that. Always saying that I had ordered them, and me always saying I hadn't. And the same thing happened every time. But time heals all wounds. Gesundheit! Well, this is it. It's finally happened. I'm going. Oh, what do I do? Gertrude. I'll call Gertrude. I'll call Gertrude. Oh. This is Gertrude. Excellent phone service. Oh, Gertrude. I don't know. I think I'm going M-U-T-F. Now, look here, Sterling Holloway. You may be silly, but you're not crazy. I'll be right down and see what's wrong with you. And in the meantime, you just relax, take it easy, read a book. Yeah, that's it. Just read a book until I get there. Yeah. All right. Goodbye. Hurry over. Relax. Read a book. Yes. Oh, a thousand and one kinds of insanity. Mm -hmm. A first indication of pixelation is imagining you hear strange noises. But you're a crooked goose when you hear dogs talking. You may cure yourself of this delusion by putting yourself in a dog's place, doing what they do. dog shoes just to show you how absolutely silly it is to believe that a dog can talk. See, I uh, read about it in the book. You told me about interesting book pictures you are in the book. And... Now, Sterling, you're all right. Perfectly all right. Now, you get your hat. We're going to see a man about a dog. Talking dog, that is. Well, Doc, from that, would you say I still had all my marbles? Huh? My boy, you haven't a thing to worry about. You've done a lot of imagining. Sort of illusion. Oh. Oh. Hey, let me show you what I mean. Manny here belongs to one of my patients who imagines he hears this goat talking to him. Oh. <laughs> now, that just goes to show you it's only imagination. You've nothing really wrong with you, Mr. Holloway. Oh, yeah? Well, I still think he's crazier than a pet bug. <laughs> What's going on around here? Jump and Jehoshaphat, a talking goat. <laughs> 